Next curve. Hey everyone, this is Leonard Lee, executive analyst at Next Curve, and and <laughs> hi, I'm Roy Chua. I'm the uh, principal at at Evitvik, uh, another analyst firm. Yeah, and you know, you guys, if you follow me, you know, you know this guy. Yeah, I think you know, only a fraction of the people that follow you know who I, know. I am. Yeah, well, okay. yeah, I mean, I love this guy. He does a great job. One of um, the respected analysts in the uh, telco space and networking space. And uh, we've done some collaborations. So if you haven't checked out our collaborations, check it out. Check it out on the uh, Next Curve YouTube channel. Just look up YouTube, and you'll find a bunch of stuff there. Uh, a lot of great sessions. In fact, you know, I think we did some very, very, very thought-leading pieces on private networks we did. and a bunch of other stuff. So. For sure, absolutely. Yes. So we are here at reinvent 2023 with 60 plus thousand of our closest friends. Yeah, yeah, and we are very fortunate to be in the less populated areas of the event. So we're here attending the uh, Analyst Summit. And uh, it's located at the Wynn Hotel, which is beautiful, by the way. And the food is quite good. And the coffee, not bad. It's actually not bad. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's actually drinkable. Better yeah. than drinkable, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Definitely. And so what Roy and I are doing here is uh, we are participating in the telco, you know, call it like the telco analyst track. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Really I think that's track. the closest thing to it. Yeah. But we, right. we, we are brought around to the appropriate sessions that are telco related. Right. Adjacent. Yeah, yeah, and um, and so as I have mentioned in some of the prior uh, vlog posts, um, most of the focus that I have personally, and I, I'm, I'm sure that you know, well, hey, since we we're kind of hanging out like, yep. for the next three days, or the have been for the the past two and next day, uh, really focused on the taco stuff, but then. Um, Thursday, Friday, it's all about everything else but telco. But hey, um, I wanted to see, see if you uh, wanted to have a chance to share some of your thoughts to the audience. Sure. Uh, what are some of the takes that you've had um, that you can talk about? That's right. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah. you're right. Some of those things are preview, which will be coming soon. But, uh, but I would say... Obviously, everyone saw the keynotes, you know, Peter's keynote, um, as well as, you know, Adam's keynote. Um, I think a couple of things that overlap or intersect with Telco, some of it's a little ahead of, of Telco, where we are right yeah. now in Telco, which is serverless. I think, you know, serverless was a big theme at, Telco, uh, at AWS reInvent. Not so much relevant to the Telco yet, because yeah. very few Telcos that, that I work with or that, that I know um, are on that serverless path. But clearly, what AWS believes is that serverless is the way to go. And so they've made huge advancements on the database side, you know, on all the uh, application side around serverless, right? So cheaper, faster, better on serverless, more convenient yeah. use of serverless. I think that's one trend in there. Second one is that silicon continues to be important to yeah. so AWS and, um, you know, the Graviton 4 with that additional performance, additional cost saving, that is relevant to Telco. You know, we're seeing workloads, you know, with sure. RAN being ported, or core being ported to some of the Graviton workloads and, and, and they keep reminding us that, you know, the early Gravitons already saved you know, 70% in terms of, you know, uh, I think yeah. it was like energy savings or cost sure. efficiency, right? And so with Graviton 4, it's supposed to get better. And then, and then AI ML, everything's of AI ML, so Tranium 2 is now available along yeah. with Refresher 2. So I think that silicon part was clearly important as well. And, and then beyond that, I think for the telco side, what struck me was the ongoing traction that AWS is having with a lot of telcos. I think it's, it's, it's quite remarkable. I, I never thought... I would see the day where the telcos migrated part of their networks to the cloud, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. IT workloads is one thing, right? But yeah, yeah. But but yeah, I mean, it's it's happening, and the, when yeah. you have detailed architecture diagrams, it's real. Well, yeah, actually, well, it's in production. You know, so it's, real. Um, yeah. it's real in certain instances, but yeah, you know, at the moment, uh, I, I think we're still looking at uh, mostly greenfield POC um, trials, but definitely a lot of the concept. I, I mean, you know, here's the thing: uh, that my impression from earlier on this year when we talk to AWS is they're sharpening their pencils a bit. There's definitely a lot of learning. And, you know, I, 
in jest um, uh, mentioned to uh, one of the AWS um, friends of ours here, it's like the edge is uh, different and it is cool. It is not loud, it's different. And so one of the really cool takeaways for me is to see the AWS telco team start to take those lessons. I mean, because it, you know the lessons are not only technical, operational, they're also commercial, right? Sure. We Absolutely, heard some of yeah, that. Yeah, there are some and commercial considerations. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and so, yeah, and earlier in the year, I wrote how hyperscalers are still trying to figure out what is their role, what's their position. It's, it truly is still the case. Um, but that being said, there's a lot of traction being made, and especially as AWS continues to iterate with its clients, and its partners and figuring out, okay, where does the cloud value, the cloud value proposition really fit in and uh, you know, uh, enable new efficiencies, but also enable uh, new transformations of the industry and the way that operators operate. These things are gonna eventually amount to something, right? And ultimately, uh, the hyperscalers in particular AWS will figure out its place. And you know, that's the thing that I think is really important. It's interesting about this whole telco cloud right. narrative mm -hmm. or story mm -hmm. is that it is really in, in progress and it's not exactly an easy. No, it's not. I think, you know, the telcos have a very complicated estate on the network side. You know, a lot of it's been built over the last, you know, 20, 30 years. You know, 2G is still in existence along with 3G and 4G and, you know, we talk about 5 and 6G. And so they have a lot to deal with. But I think what's clear is collectively, I think the cloud, AWS specifically in, in this case, um, and the telcos are figuring out where the early use cases are. Yeah. And there are some you know, low hanging fruit like you know, disaster recovery, DR, yeah. where you can migrate some of that from the cloud. Yeah. And the elasticity of the cloud or the ability to basically store a backup, backup. Um, yeah. backup mobile core that you don't have to bring up and pay for until you actually need it. Yeah. That's, that's a smart use case. So I thought, I mean, I think very promising. Very yeah. Promising. yeah, and um, again, all that, and then there's some use cases, obviously a lot of the brownfield stuff, um, you know, at the moment, look kind of like ancillary in terms of operational function, but, you know, they're discovering where they can be core, they can be core but also adapting their commercial models, their deployment um, paradigms, uh, operational paradigms as well, partnership paradigms, That's correct. to, to uh, make it purpose, uh, purpose designed for the telco. Yeah, I guess industry. so. Adapted to telco. I think the yeah. adaptation is happening both yeah. ways. I think <coughs> telcos are adapting and understanding what cloud can bring them. And yeah. likewise, I think AWS, with a pretty large telco team that already has a lot of domain expertise, are trying to map what the cloud can do for telcos. And I think what's also impressive is their willingness to change their cloud infrastructure uh, yeah. and their t technologies to adapt to telco needs, right? So, yeah. you know, multi VPC. You know, uh, attachments, right, on, on yeah. the networking side. So it's 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 good. Yeah, I think no, everyone's it learning. It yeah. is good. And um, and um, as far as, I mean, everyone's like probably wondering. Oh my God, Gen AI. Gen AI. Gen AI. I think What's you know, yeah. it, it's it's happening. You know, Q is pretty cool. You know, um, I mean, I would say that it's still early yet. I think you know what Amazon has indicated to us is the importance of Gen AI. And they want to start controlling the narrative, and they want to take lead position where they can, where possible. But I think what what stuck out clearly was AWS's choice, right? Basically, yeah. their their positioning around choice, choice of FMs, foundation models, choice of workflows and processes, choice of you know where you want to run, and and, and I think it's the one model doesn't fit all uh, philosophy here is what they're they're banking on, um, and. You know, Q is interesting. I've tried it out. Actually, mm -hmm. it, it's not bad. It, it, it's it's. I'm sure it'll get better. But uh, it's it actually quite promising. Um, and Bedrock, I've actually tried it out as well. And again, I was quite impressed with the fact of how fast. I mean, that what what's interesting is how fast they rolled out some of those new features on Bedrock, yeah. not just FMs, but built-in RAG uh, retrieval augmentation. Uh, that you can just upload your documents and you know, knowledge base and get it, tie into Lambda for agent tick or agent base yeah. in access, and then guardrails in there, toxicity yeah. checks and all that. And that was very quick, considering, you know, yeah. a couple of months ago, you didn't have any of that available, right? So yeah. very fast response. Um, we'll see 
whether it, it's able to you know sort of get, give them some lead in the market but the market's changing so rapidly it's hard to tell yeah, um, yeah. and you know I mean there's all this talk about who's winning the generative AI race I don't know who came out with that but you know <laughs> Whoever did, it's ridiculous. So stop it. I can, I can tell you who's winning. AI is winning. Yeah. Um, whoever's selling. Yeah. Um, how to how to prompt uh, X copilot or GPT uh, in two days uh, seminar. Those are the guys that are making all the money. You know we anyway, should sell that. Yeah, yeah we, we should. We should. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, I, I think uh, one of the things that is definitely uh, really kind of great about being here in Las Vegas with the, the and having access to the AWS technical team is just some of these really grounded conversations that we can have. And so Ross, Chris, big fans, love what you guys do. Absolutely. We always have, you know, love having those technical conversations with you guys on generative AI. But I think these are the more important things that come out of these types of sessions. And, you know, there's, you know, what the CEO says and then there's what the technical folks on the ground are having to deal with, working with clients to make good gen AI possible. And I think that's really going to be, you know, so we're still trying to figure out responsible AI. A lot of people haven't figured that out. A lot of big companies haven't. Um, I would argue AWS still has a ways to go. The next thing is good AI. How do you get to good generative AI? So these chatbots, how do you make them reliable? How do you make them actually, uh, uh, you know, agents that contribute to productivity and enablement of workforces, not injecting issues and, you know, hallucinating things into your business that can cause uh, harm not only to the business but your customers. That's really going to become a big thing because, you know, there's a lot of POCs going on yeah, right now. And, I, and, you know, the standard for what should go GA hasn't been a standard. I think it's like pretty up in the air. No, I think it's up in the air. So, I think, you know, you're right. Most of it's POCs. A lot of it's employee focused because of some yeah. semblance of control. You know, when the external Inter people get, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when it's external, that's a whole different bar, right? Yeah. Exactly. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Very good. So yeah, that's what we can share so far. I mean, yeah, we, we heard about Kuiper, and we can't talk too much about it other than what you can probably Google. Yeah, it's, um, you know, Adam talked about it in his yeah. keynote, and that's all we can say right yeah, now. But it's exciting. It. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Well, hey, um, you know, always a pleasure. Yeah, you know, this is just the beginning of day three, but uh, thanks for sharing your uh, insights and your takes. Um, so far, you're welcome, and uh, we'll maybe follow up later on. Uh, yeah, I think tomorrow. post event, yeah, post yeah, event, we and can definitely, definitely post event. Yeah, and so thanks for tuning in. Remember to follow Next Curve at www.next-curve.com, and also follow Roy Chua at Avid Think, and that's www.avidthink.com. Uh, and then also, you know, subscribe to my newsletter and you will get all of the tech and industry insights that matter from Next Curve. <laughs> We're out. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you.